We've got him. I know he's your favourite. Every week we speak to one of the finest thinkers of his generation, the best-selling author of inspired works, including The Strange Death of Europe, The War on the West and The Madness of Crowds. Douglas, let's start with what could be the end of Joe Biden's run for re-election. A special counsel report found he willfully retained and disclosed classified documents at his home, but no charges were recommended because the 81-year-old commander-in-chief is greatly diminished mentally. The report not only noted Biden's diminished faculties and lack of mental state of willfulness, but it also noted Joe Biden couldn't even remember when he was vice president. So he's too diminished to stand trial, but he can run the most powerful country in the world? I know. It, it was an astonishing uh, revelation, this, Rita. It came out late yesterday and uh, it just many people said immediately, well, that's it. Clearly, the Democrats are trying to finally push Joe Biden off the nomination ticket because this this revelation, as it were, from within, I mean, it's, not, it's not coming from the Republicans, uh, this revelation that during his questioning, he couldn't remember when, which years he'd been vice president. He couldn't remember, I think, when he'd, the year he'd run for president. And it was clear they, they didn't want to go ahead because uh, a, a jury would find that he had not enough cognitive ability to 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 mm. talk about his own uh, experience and the idea that this same man is in the most powerful position in the world is something which is just it's a scandal you and I have talked about before the democrats have clearly been trying to cover it over they've been hoping he'll get better um or something like that or it'll become less <laughs> noticeable and they can just they can just allow him to to roll on and and the fact is though again we saw this only in in the press conference he gave to say in response to these revelations no i'm okay during the press conference he said he just had a conversation with president cc of of um of mexico um <laughs> and um, yeah. as you know president C is not the president of mexico it's uh, he's president of egypt no. but uh, there was a time we just said that was a normal biden gaffe but now it looks now it looks like it's not just a normal Biden gaffe. It's really rather sad. And if he wasn't protected by the bulk of the media all this time, today wouldn't be so shocking. But if you've paid attention and we've discussed it, what, for more than three years now, even whilst he was running for president, the cognitive decline there it has been obvious and, yeah, for reasons that defy logic, his handlers had him address the nation today. It did not go well. He lashed out at the special counsel and at the reporters who questioned him about his uh, cognitive abilities. For months when you were asked about your age, you would respond with the words, watch me. Well, many American people have been watching and they have expressed concerns about your age. That is they, your judgment. They, that is your judgment. That court, is not the judgment of the press. That's not, that's not the judgment of the press. She is the press. And as you mentioned, he also seemed to think uh, Mexico shares a border with Gaza. He mixed up the Egyptian leader, leader with that of Mexico. As you know, initially, the president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate to allow humanitarian material to get in. I talked to him. I convinced him to open the gate. Douglas, uh, what happens next? Can he run again? Well, I'd have thought it's just increasingly clear that he can't. But as we know, there is this kind of uh, extraordinary situation that Biden has, which is that the Democrats believe that if there's any major shakeup on their ticket this year, it'll all just be an advantage to Donald Trump, who's certainly the most likely person by a very far margin. Uh, to become the Republican nominee. And effectively, Trump and Biden have been sort of like this. They've been leaning on each other. And both parties think if their guy goes, then then they collapse. Um, now, the Republicans may or may not be right in that. But the Democrats, I think, to an extent, are right in that. Because, you know, the question for them is they, they don't have a very good bench. Uh, of uh, of people in their party, they may have coming up. There are some talented younger congressmen and, and and so on, congresswomen in in the Democratic Party. There's also some absolute left wing nutters, 
Um, but the but the, the main thing is, is that it's not obvious who would replace uh, uh, Biden as the nominee, particularly at relatively late stage. Uh, obviously, it can't be Kamala Harris, who who, who we know, uh, you know, in, in mm. the po- the polls show that the American public regard as absolutely unfit for the presidency. Um, uh, but but they have to sort of find some way to deal with the the Kamala problem, and then you got you know somebody like Gavin Newsom of of, of California, and we've just seen your previous segment, mm. Rita. You know, wh- what what did he do to California? He, he did that. He did that. He made it mm. a state in which theft was 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 legal. He's, he's been a disaster in every role that he's uh, served, but he keeps mm-hmm. failing up and, uh, gosh, he could be president one day. Now, let's move along to your home country. You wrote a powerful piece for The Spectator today where you said you're embarrassed by modern Britain and that you no longer even uh, recognise your own country. What, why is that? Well, there's several things. Uh, one is the fact that, that, as I say in that piece, virtues and and certain aspects of the national characteristic which I grew up with uh, and which I think epitomized Britain, like a sort of certain doggedness, a sort of stoicism, um, a, uh, um, and, and, and actually I think a courage, and a courage in the face of adversity, a quiet courage, uh, which was strong when provoked, all seem to have disappeared. It, it, there's, there's endless sort of whining. The, the, the House of Commons this week spent its time talking about whether or not the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak should have made a reference to trans people that wasn't 100% politically correct in the eyes of the left, whilst the mother of a murdered trans child was in the in the the the, the, the gallery of the Commons, and and they all were just out competing each other to be more and more enraged about that. Meantime, massive problems affecting the country, like the fact we have these hate marches every Saturday, uh, in which people are completely, mainly Muslims, are completely unbothered uh, uh, about exposing their bigotries, their hatreds, including their hatred of Britain. This just goes on all the time. Every Saturday, it happened again last Saturday, they actually clamber over our war memorials to our war dead, and uh, they defile them and desecrate them. And uh, and the police let them do it. And by contrast... Mm. Uh, there has recently been an MP who we discussed before who stepped down because of threats to his life from Muslim extremists. And everyone in the Commons and elsewhere sort of said, oh, well, how sad. And um, I don't recognise that. I I remember the generation of Margaret Thatcher, who, when the Brighton bomb went off, the, the conference bomb, the Brighton Hotel bomb, that was meant to kill her, did kill a number of her friends and many others, stood outside the, um, the next day and said, the conference will go ahead. We will never give in to the men of violence. I, I don't know where that where that spirit has gone. It seems to have been beaten out of many of the British people, at least, certainly, mm. our ruling class. Well, yeah, that stoic stiff upper lip has been replaced by self-loathing, it seems. Uh, Is that what Britain needs, a leader like Thatcher? The the options of the coming election are uh, pretty grim, Douglas. Uh, Ain't no Thatchers there. No, there there certainly ain't. I mean, you know, Keir Starmer is just trying to get through and get into office with people noticing as little as possible about his policies. I suspect he'll make them plain to us, as I said before, once he's in office. And Rishi Sunak just has this terrible, terrible, increasing desperation in his eyes as he realises that, that he's for the chop uh, at the electoral uh, uh, ballot box. Uh, but, but yes, it's this thing, I mean, you, you can see him there, this sort of grinning, um, desperate to please, um, no real leadership, uh, no willingness to do the unpopular things you sometimes need to do and just explaining, not leading, but following, as the phrase goes. But as I say, uh, uh, the thing that that's just stuns me is, you know, Britain has undergone massive demographic transformation in the in the last couple of decades. And it's a transformation which has gone on on rocket fuel under this conservative government. Uh, it will almost certainly continue at a similar rate under a Labour government. And it seems to me that it's because of this 
that our political class is so incapable of identifying problems in front mm -hmm. of it. When the MP who said he would stand down because of threats to his life stood down, he said that one of the reasons was that his murdered colleague, Sir David Amos, was murdered by Ali Harby Ali. Uh, and the, one of the other people he wanted to apparently kill was um, Mike Freer. Well, an interview this mm -hmm. week, in an interview this week, they, um, Mike Freer was asked about this, and then the interviewer said, what motivated Ali Harbi Ali? And Mike Freer said, uh, I'm not sure about that. I don't know. Oh, well, oh, here's what. He was killed by an Islamist uh, who followed jihadist ideology. And it's a darn fool position for a man to be and to stand up for somebody more than he's willing to stand up for himself. But I can say this on behalf of Mike Freer. The person who was apparently thinking of killing him and who did kill Sir David Amos MP was motivated by jihadist ideology. And I would have liked to have seen in the wake of that Sir David's MPs not just mourn his death as if he had, had a, died of natural causes, but to have said, we will root this ideology out of Britain wholesale. It has no place here. Did anyone come near saying that? No, not a bit. Oh. And that is a they didn't, for Britain. Absolute catastrophe. They didn't even say it when jihadists murdered children at a concert. Uh, that you just wonder what what they're thinking and why they uh, just show this cowardice. Uh, you've been impacted by this in a small way just in the past week. Your speech had to be moved after the venue submitted to the bullying or, and, and the threats, I'd imagine, of the anti-Israeli mob, but the protesters still turned up at another venue to scream abuse about you. Let's have a look. Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Douglas, uh, do you feel safe in, in modern Britain, in London? I don't think anyone's particularly safe in uh, a modern British and modern London. Um, uh, I think Jews are particularly unsafe. Uh, this uh, was, uh, I was meant to be speaking at the Apollo Theatre on Shaftesbury Avenue in the heart of the West End. A thousand people were turning out and uh, the theatre was um, bullied uh, um, into cancelling the event on the day. And uh, the event was moved to a synagogue, which was the only place the police could protect. Um, I believe mm. that the job of the British police on such an occasion, I believe the job of the theatre is to keep the show on the road. Um, and I believe the job of the police is to ensure that the, that the public and attendees are safe. Uh, but that wasn't what happened. Uh, some, some of the staff were apparently threatened, um, uh, you know, ushers and so on. And instead of the, or the owners reporting this to the police immediately and the police taking action, uh, the staff said they wouldn't turn up to work. So then more people were brought in from another theatre and then they were had their addresses leaked. They were apparently threatened and intimidated in turn and they too oh, refused gosh. to turn up. So, you Douglas, know, so... Uh, it's, it's... It's mob rule. It's mob rule it's that mob the rule. thugs are winning. It, it is not yes. should not be happening in a civilised country. Uh, Douglas Murray, thank you so much for your time this evening. Really appreciate it.